had feedback on my computer. So the only way you're going to see me is my picture with my husband <laughs> in Alaska a bunch of years ago. And um, I apologize, had, had it all worked out yesterday, I thought, but so I'm doing this through my phone and I'm going to be moving things in and out of the window here, okay? Can everybody see these all right? The handout that I gave you? Okay, yes. just wave. I can actually see John, so I'm gonna look at him for confirmation. So anyway, I'm Jamie Wright. Thank you, Ralph, for asking me to come again, even in this format. I feel like a disembodied voice, but uh, I did take the Sterling Edwards Zoom workshop uh, for two days last week, and it worked out really well, but he had to purchase pretty pricey, I guess, um, webcams to make it work. So he went back and forth between two, two computers and it, and it worked out really well. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I hope you all got these handouts that Ralph sent. I'm afraid being a former art teacher, I tend to do the handout thingy. And uh, to begin with, lost and found also means hard and soft. And you know, I was painting for years before I even became aware of what people were talking about in regards to lost and found edges. And the reason a lot of artists use them is because it makes your painting more artistic, more creative, more interesting, and it doesn't have that cut and paste feel to it. I know a lot of beginners, since I teach beginners, they really try hard to paint exactly what they see. And usually, that's not the most um, artistic way to handle it. You wanna interpret what you see. You want to be able to um, make it your rendition of what you're viewing and capture the interest of your audience. So using lost and found edges to me just gives you a uh, more variety. And um, it's a technique basically, and it can be handled in a number of ways to create these edges that come and go. I think the most profound thing I heard so far about lost and found edges was, I believe it was Sterling Edwards. He said, when you have a lost soft edge, it leads pathways through your painting for your eye to follow. When you have hard, sharp, found edges, it blocks your view and it stops your eye from rotating around the painting. And I thought that, that makes a lot of sense. You stop and look at one thing, you try to get to another part of the painting, look at that and there's no really a, a good flow. Jamie? So, yes. Um, this is Ralph. Uh, I have a question. So I, I've heard somebody say, I don't know who it was, that the, the hard edged um, pieces probably mm -hmm. are more, are better used in the, near the center of interest, near the, near the topic for the, the, the painting. Is, have you found right. that to be true? Exactly, because you know, when you do a, a watercolor in particular, you're trying to control the water. So when you want to have a focus, and most paintings have a center of interest or a focal point, you do have hard edges in more detail because your eye will be led there by the softer edges on the outside and around your uh, main part of your painting. So yeah, definitely more hard edges towards your center of interest. And, and I'll be able to demonstrate that, I hope pretty adequately. Okay, so Ralph, please jump in so I don't feel like I'm sitting here talking to myself, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, so and I'm also other, start... other, people, other people can ask questions as well. They That's can great. Themselves. Yeah, that would be terrific. So I'm going to start with just explaining and showing you how I handle lost and found edges. So I'm gonna start with this side here, uh, found edge. I do have my tray here. It's my plain air tray, actually. I don't have, I have a couple little greens, but mostly I mix my greens. I have these brushes, a flat, a round, and a rigger. And then Sterling Edwards last week introduced us to what he calls a blending brush. And it's very hard, bristle, has an interesting handle to grip it. And he uses it for um, blending and creating lost edges. So, so I Jamie, one. 
That's uh -huh. not the same as a hockey brush then? No, uh-uh. Nope, he calls it a blending brush, but I would think it's very similar. These are a little shorter bristles, I believe. Uh -huh. Well, no, they're longer than a hack hockey brush, right? Hi. So he had, this is a small one. He has a medium and a large one, exactly the same way. So these are the brushes I'm gonna be using. He also had an interesting way. Katie, you took the class, didn't you? Katie had, or maybe not. Yes, I'm to yes, I did. I, I took the class, I saw you in the pictures, yes. And the yeah. toilet paper thing was fascinating. Yeah, the toilet paper. I don't know if you can see it. He takes a roll of toilet paper, mm -hmm. squashes it, folds paper towels and puts around it. I stuck it in a Tupperware bowl. Mm -hmm. And that's what he uses to dampen his brush and to rinse it, you know, when he's needs has too much water or changing color or whatever. So I started using it and it's terrific. <laughs> who, who would have guessed? So when you buy cheap toilet paper, that's one thing you can do. If there's a toilet paper shortage, you can't use it. Oh, okay. Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Hi, this is Rhonda. I yes. have both the hockey brush and this blending brush. Uh huh. Sterling there. And the, the hockey brush is way softer. Oh, um, okay. It tends to that's shed probably, more, too. So yeah, just, that's probably the distance, the difference, I mean. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I, I think this one pushes the water into the into the um paper, paper a little better. more right anyways for, for what no, it's I worth appreciate it. i had i think i had a hockey brush years ago and i i wasn't impressed too much so <laughs> i never bought another one so i've loaded my brush with uh i believe it's ultramarine and a flat a, a, i mean a a hard found edge is simply you know, it's got four edges that are all hard and they're not going anywhere, right? They're pretty simple. That's basically laying in a wash. Um, you can do hard edges like this, any shape. And also you can do hard edges with rounds, obviously. You can control and there's no, um, no bleeding, and usually you can do it in one or two uh, strokes. Hard edges also, found edges in your lines, and everything's connected. There's no softening anywhere, really. The values can change, but they're still hard edge and what we call found. Jamie, Any questions on that? Yes. Yeah, when you started to do your first stroke with the flat uh, uh, brush, um, there was a little bit of, uh, I don't know what you, what you call it, where, where not all of the, the, the paint didn't come all the way to the edge. There was like a little gap initially. Uh -huh. and, and sometimes you like that. You want, you want kind right. of, uh, where does that a fit little, in the soft and hard and lost? It would be hard. considered hard because it would be um, uh, even the little bumpy shapes, at the raw edges, they're uh -huh. still pretty hard. They're not softened or diluted or anything. So, you know, your dry brush can be very hard edge too. Yes. Uh, here's a dry brush. I'll see if I can, here's a dry brush. Yeah, see yeah, how yeah, these are yeah. all defined uh, shapes there. And then if I wanted to soften it, I'd dampen my brush, maybe go over it and bleed it a little. Yeah. Okay, so you, can, you lose all those little um, pits. You softened them with another value. Okay? Okay. Now the lost ones are a little more fun, I think. I'll start out with the, the same um, hard edge, flat. I really like my flats. And it's a matter of basically doing a graded wash. And I'm pretty sure you're all familiar with graded washes, okay? Um, what I'm doing is softening, taking the paint out of my brush and adding some water. And graded washes are really tricky, but it really softens your edge. And it's basically, oops, sorry, I bumped it. Don't get sick on me. It's basically just bleeding it out and softening that edge. 
So now I have a lost edge right here, okay? And it would continue to let your eye go from here over to the lighter areas. And now I'm just using plain water, all right? Now Sterling Edwards with his brush, he would do a hard edge. And then he would take his blending brush and just start smoothing it out a little bit like this. You'd add a little more water, that was kind of dry. And he said the reason he created these brushes was to avoid a, back a backwash of the color. Now I'm using 140 rough, so it's gonna be a little more pitted. Not a bad look though. No, so you have your hard edge and then you have your lost um, soft edge, all right? Couple of ways to do it, just a graded wash and then using a, some of your brushes with harder bristles to create a softer edge. Um, with the round brush, you can do the same thing. Let me get my lizard, my paint on here. I like the S curve. And again, I'm gonna maybe soften it here. Now it doesn't mean you, if you do soft edges, the whole thing has to be softer lost edges, all right? You can alternate back and forth. So this has become a soft edge, lost edge. And this down here, I can keep it hard on the one side and then start softening this side. In other words, bleeding it more. Okay. So this one actually is a mixture of hard and soft. The last one with the rigger. He likes to use the riggers a lot or liner brushes. And you know, we tend to do a branch like this, like over here. We want it solid. We put in every little branch that we see and they're all connected. The other way to do a lost edge is to basically leave a space, a broken line. We don't really always have to have to connect everything. Can you see that okay? Is it light enough? Yes. I mean, dark enough? Good. Okay. It's almost like bamboo brush painting somewhat. And some of you might've taken it. When you do uh, grass and stuff, leaves, little shapes, you don't have to connect it. So these, yes, these are hard shapes, but they're broken shapes. So they can be considered partially lost too. All right, any questions on these lost and found types of uh, line shapes and techniques? All right, John, I'm watching you. Any questions? <laughs> I'm gonna pick on John because he used no, to be one okay. of them. I'm used to it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Now, what I wanted to do is do a, a, a landscape using these lost and uh, found edges. So you can see the practical application. And you know me, I'm a boring landscape artist. I will um, try other things and then I seem to always come back to landscapes. All right, make sure this is centered so you can see it. So sky and clouds. The there was a, how many of you get Artist Network, uh, the magazine, the watercolor artists, and then they have Artist Network online and they send you articles week, monthly. I hope some of you are familiar with that because they've started doing live streaming demos. Some you pay for, some are, spring, are free. So there is a man named jo Johan, Johan Volthus. I think I wrote his name in my notes. And he is for, what he calls random wetting the paper. So this is dry right now, but I'm just gonna put a stroke here of wet. And this way, when he puts in a sky, he automatically gets lost and found edges because some of the areas will bleed and some will stay hard. 
some will stay soft and um, some will also harden up for the edges of different uh, clouds and such. So I have a little bit of cobalt, a little bit of cerulean. I'm going to let that sink in a little bit. Can you see the water? Yes. Okay. A little damp here. I'm going to bleed that out a little bit. I have to tilt it to so see where I got it wet and where I didn't get it wet. Okay, so he's going to put in a sky. Whoops. And you can see it's already creating hard and soft edges in the sky area. And I'm just kind of randomly going around here. So I kind of have some lighter areas, kind of wispy clouds right here. And then I have little harder areas of white right here. Down here, not so much water. So I'm going to get a harder edge maybe along in here, here, maybe up here a little more. Sounds like this is something you could just have fun with. It, it really is. And you know, when you were talking about drawing and painting with your left hand, this would be great. You miss an area with water, no big deal. So I got some little hard wispy clouds and I got a nice big soft one here. And if I wanted to make that more white, I could lift some of this out a little bit. All right. Oops. Look at that, I'm even bleeding my explanation up here. All right, so it's called random wetness. You don't wet the whole paper, you just kind of sporadically go here and there with your wet brush and see what happens. All right, any questions on that? Now I'm gonna shift to the distant hills. Now, distant hills to me, that's going to be a definitely lost edge. In landscapes, you want to create the illusion of depth. And so I'm going to wet the paper pretty solidly, not random this time. And this will be my, I'm not going to worry about the sky at the moment, but this will be my uh, horizon here. Did get a little wet. Okay. Here's the Sahara Desert, all right? And you're dying of thirst. And in the distance, you see these beautiful, green, rich, wet mountains where you're going to be saved. See, this is hard. I'm used to the audience laughing. Okay, I'll, Ralph, try, I'll try to be more demonstrative. No, I think we need to laugh once in a while. <laughs> Thank you, Katie, I think, right? Okay, so what I'm doing on the side here is trying to mix myself a nice vibrant green. And I've used ultramarine and Naples yellow. And it's I'm also letting the wet dry a little bit. Okay. So these are very soft and lost edges, all right? Pretty much wet into wet, right? I don't think anything, this is anything new from some of you, except maybe just the terminology. If I want to make them evergreen trees, some, you know, in the distance there, they're not close up because they're pretty far away. Oop, I ended up with a hard edge right here, but maybe I'll leave it. Okay. Let accidents happen. All right. So we got our sky. We have our distant hills. Now I'm going to shift to the trees in the distance. So here's my horizon again, hard edged, blue green field. And as things come closer, they tend to be a little more hard edged like Ralph was mentioning, because it might be your focal point or something.
Okay. Not as dark as I want, but. Okay, so these are groves of trees. I'm using my round brush. They're closer in. I also like to drop in color even while they're hard edged, because if they're hard edged in the same color all the way across, it can be pretty boring. Okay, see that nice grove of trees there? They're getting closer to me than those distant hills. I'm just gonna drop in some, this is uh, Prussian blue, just to give a little value change for my my grove of trees that are found edges, and I did it all on dry paper. How about okay? some credit card scraping? I save that for rocks, but you can do it with um, like tree trunks, uh, tree trunks and such. I'm looking for my rigger because I noticed <laughs> this rigger. I just ordered this one from uh, Sterling Edwards. It was actually in uh, um, Jerry's Artorama that he sells Sterling Edwards supplies too. But yeah, depending on how dark, you know, if you scratch something and it's still wet, you're gonna get dark lines. You see that? Yeah. If I wait a minute and it gets a little drier, then I can create white lines. You know that? Yes. I always thought that was pretty cool because the wet, runs into the groove you've created and you end up with the dark line. If it's a little drier, you can actually scrape the paint away and nothing will run into those grooves you've created. Okay, I think that's kind of cool. Super. All right, so hard edges found, meaning they're not gonna bleed anywhere except maybe into down here at the bottom, but the top where I wanted it to be hard, it's all stayed hard, okay? Now, this was that Johan's uh, thing, the um, tree foliage. He would go back and do, this is the tops of trees. He would do this random wet thing again. He would actually push the brush. I was kind of cringing thinking, oh, the poor bristles. But he's just making it very randomly wet. My brush is a little dirty, but you can see the wet areas on the paper. Okay. All right. So let's pretend that the light's coming from this direction. That's my arrow. Whoop, I got a hard and soft arrow there. Um, I'm gonna keep one side of the trees Pretty light. Now you see how I ended up with these hard edges here and here's a little soft and here's some soft, here's a hard, here's hard. It's a mixture because you're random with everything. Now I'm gonna do the shadows, maybe here. These are gonna be a little softer, push up a little bit just a touch over here, but my shadows are pretty much, and look how much hard edge I have on this side because I didn't very get very much water. Okay? Yeah. And it's all on a skinny tree trunk. <laughs> so my point is when it's random, when you water, wet the paper randomly, you're gonna get these soft edges. You're gonna get, I mean, you're gonna get found, and lost and found, lost over here more in the middle. I guess I put most of my wet in the middle because look at how that all ran together. So these are a lot of um, lost edges. Everything has a sharp edge, pretty found. If I don't want everything that detailed and that found, and I wanna soften things a bit, I'll just add some water with control, just bleed it out a bit. Okay, nice. tree foliage. I love how you leave the white 
And these hard edges were areas that did not get any water, but they kind of give it that airy quality of a, of a tree. All right, now the tree trunks. I'm gonna show you the, the before and the beginner version, and then I'll show you the lost and found version. Okay, here's what my beginners usually do. They connect everything, everything's hard, everything's connected. Uh, yes, you can drop in more color, which is cool. Oop. But it's basically all found edges, right? There's yeah. nothing wrong with starting up, breaking it, and having lost edges in there. You know, I might come back later and create a negative space around my tree. So you see how those um, broken areas, these are actually hard edges and found, but the space in between becomes lost because it's just not really connected to too much. I can even soften some of this and let it blend into the background. A lot of negative space going on, negative painting too. When you do smaller branches, like I was demonstrating, let the line break, you know, let them float out there. Because you know what, the human eye does a lot of work and connects things for you. Whoops. All right. Super. Found, hard, a little bit of both, but mostly lost edges. Okay. Good. Any questions on all these components? I'm looking at you, John. Are you awake? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see I can see like three people and uh, John and Ralph are one of them. Okay, right. so what I'm going to do is go ahead and combine all of that into a landscape. And I apologize, I'll be shifting my paper back and forth so you can see it. I drew it on a um, horizontal piece of paper, but for the life of me, I don't know why my camera is only showing me vertical. All right, so I'll do this part of it here. Can you, I don't know if you can actually see the drawing or not. It's very light. So, all right. I'm gonna move quickly because one of the things I love about watercolor is the quickness of it. Whoops, guess who has dirty water? So I'm doing the random wetting of the sky. This is my sky. All right. And one thing about skies, and I'm going to get to it later, is do you understand what I mean by zenith? When you look up into the sky, the darkest part of the sky is way above your head, the top that you can see. And as you get closer to the horizon, it becomes lighter. And in watercolor, it's the same you can really create a nice sky with it thing being darker at the zenith, the top of your page basically, and then uh, lightening it as you get closer to the horizon. Okay, I'm not letting this dry a whole lot, but, and I apologize for, let me see if I can bring my light over here so I'm not always in it. How's that? <laughs> Okay, I've got a fully loaded brush and I'm doing my sky. I'm just going side to side and I'm gonna basically have some wispy clouds. I'm not gonna concentrate on really big clouds just to get. And you can see where the wet is creating soft edges, lost edges and the and the 
harder parts, whoops, are creating more um, openings. You can see the translucency of the white paper showing through. I didn't mean to get three clouds stacked on top of each other, but then I'll just take this and create a horizon with the distant hills. Okay, can you see a lot of that? Mm -hmm. You see how it's darker up here and then it gradually gets a little bit lighter as I get down the horizon. A few little clouds, not gonna worry too much about it. Now in this drawing, I have a little river and I'm going to actually do the random wet on areas down here around my river and around my trees. Part of this is wet, part of this is dry again. We'll see what happens when I put down some raw sienna for the fields. I got trees over here. Uh, this is a wheat field, uh-huh. Is that coming across okay? Yeah. Yep. Let me get it up a little higher. Okay. This is dirt over here <laughs> and a river down below. So nice soft edges right in here, lo uh, lost ones. Here's a hard edge. Here's a hard edge where I put in some more brown. Hard edge along the riverbank. I didn't want to get that wet. And then some soft areas along in here. So lost and found is just about everywhere. But this time I'm going to show you the hard edges that Ralph asked about on your focal point. OK. This is pretty dry. By the way, I'm going to stop for a commercial break. You see this hair dryer? It's called a Ranger Heated Craft Tool. Um, Sterling Edwards showed it to us. And he, I, I went out and got one down at Dick Blick. I really liked it. And they're like 28 bucks, I think. But it's quiet and it's hot and it dries your paper super quick without blowing the paint and the water around. And uh, so I've been using it on and off, but this actually dried pretty quickly. So I don't need to use it. Okay, end of commercial break. Now, I'm going to soften my distant hills. Can you see them a little bit back here? Yep. And I'm not gonna make them as large or as big as the ones in uh, my little component part. Let's see, needs to be a little more blue. Make them a little blue, green, hazy. Whoops, sorry. Definitely wet on wet, hazy hills in the distance. Now this is, could actually be a found edge, right? Because it's pretty hard. If I want, I can go back and soften them a little bit and make them a little hazier, which I think I'm gonna try to do with uh, Sterling Edwards brush here. He just kind of softens it up like this, gets rid of that edge. We still know there's something out there, but it's definitely hazier. So I just use this blending brush again to soften these edges here. So now they're a little more uh, lost. Okay. Um, let's see. I got clean fingernails. I just had my rings cleaned. I'm gonna go ahead and use my little dryer for a minute. 
is I want to put hard edges in right here where the river comes, bound edges. How am I doing on time, Ralph? We can't, we can't hear the dryer at all, so I guess it's really quiet. Oh, it's wonderful. I mean, um, I've got it on, it only has one setting, hot. <laughs> and it's hot. Can't believe that's dry already. You're doing fine on time. Oh, yeah. It's uh, 10.07, so I think you want to do the, the, the paint along in about uh, 20 minutes? 11. At, about 11 o'clock? Okay, yeah. so you got, Got 15, yeah, about, minutes. about 11, a little, yeah. little before. Okay, so nice dry paper. So I'm going to want to put in my found hard edge. And I'm going to make that grove of trees again in the distance. And the river's coming through there. Leave a little gap for the river. I'm leaving these because these are actually kind of my tree trunks. So I'm doing a little negative painting. So I put in the basic shapes in, uh, with my flat brush, but now I'm gonna put in my, some more darker detail. Because this is kind of where my focus is gonna be. These are just lines to create some depth and then I'm going to soften these to make them found edges I mean lost edges again make it a little more interesting okay I'm getting a lot of that this is turning out to be a more vertical painting okay I think I'll drop in some super duper dark green too is that a technical term? Super duper? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just some more variety so it's not all blue and let that bleed. Plus, I want to put in some hard, hard edges along my river here. And then I'm going to rinse my brush and I'm just going to bleed those out in the area here around the river. Okay. Everybody with me so far? Yep, we're here. Okay. I actually love, love watercolors. I just, um, I went to California Western. How many of you remember that school out on Point Loma? When, uh, I was first introduced to my first watercolor class with Calvin Fortbrook. Who remembers Cal Fortbrook? Wonderful watercolorist and instructor. Anyway, he got me hooked. Okay, so I have a really hard edge here because I want it to lead up to my focus, which is going to be here on the tree hanging over and letting some of this bleed into the fields in the distance there. Okay. So I'm going back and forth from hard and soft, lost and found edges. In order to pull this area of the tree groves closer, I need to maybe darken this a little more to pull it away from the distant hills there. Okay. All right. Now, Obviously, we did random wetness here, random wetness here, uh, hard edge, found hard edges along in here, soft, lost edges for the distant hills. And I am going to let this kind of dry a little bit. So now that the sky is dry, I'm going to randomly wet the trees up here with my dirty water. My husband's at the tennis court putting blinds on the clubhouse. My dog is sleeping, so I don't have anybody to go change my water. Okay, random wetness. 
So let's see what happens. I'm gonna make my tree limbs, my tree foliage really yellow. Kind of on the left side again, because my light is coming from the left. Okay, just big clumps. And if I end up wetting some of the blue, it's automatically changing to green. So I have some found hard edges here and some soft edges here just based on the, the wetting of the paper. Now I'm gonna go with the green green. Just on, kind of on the right sides of things. Look at this, isn't that cool? Just You got your bleeding for some uh, lost edges and some hard against the sky, some found edges, some more soft. Now I need to get a middle green value here. And we'll take it right off the paper up here. I don't know if you can even see that high. Okay. Now for the third darker value, I'm mixing my ultramarine with my green that I had. Just a few spots here and there. Mostly down over here, because this is the shadow side. Oh, I covered up my birds that I drew. Now this will light dark, I mean, it'll dry lighter. We all know that. But since I have some dry areas, I'm just gonna make some little found doodads here like leaves, blowing in the wind a bit. hanging down a little low. Now, because this side here was pretty wet, it's um, lightning on me more than I want. So I'll wait and let go back in there a bit. Okay. Now, tree trunk. I think I'll wait a little bit and go ahead and put in some water. So I'm getting it, I'm, I guess I'm doing random again. I'm wetting part of the paper and some of it I'm not. And I've got a little blue here. Oop, a little turquoise blue actually. I forgot I stuck that in the corner. Get nice, nice uh, found edges along the, the riverbank and some nice um, I don't want to go too much. I want to leave some of the river white so it's reflecting the light. I don't know if it's a babbling brook or a, a calm little creek. We'll see. So look how this is softened here, hard edge here, hard edges, found edges. I keep using that all inter, like interchangeably lost, soft, found, hard. I think this is the coolest part of watercolors. You can lay in a wash and then you just touch it and it just bleeds so cool. Like little grasses or something there. My flat brush. I use it way too much. I took a workshop with Timothy, oh, what was his name? From LA, Timothy Clark. After a few days, he came up to me and said, you know, you haven't changed your brush once yet. I thought, well, is that a sin? <laughs> no, but actually he thought I needed more variety in my brush strokes, but you can do so much with a flat brush. It just amazes me. Okay. I have no patience. I should have used my dryer there. Any questions so far? I hope I'm not putting you to sleep with this idyllic little summer, summer landscape. We'd like to escape into it. Yeah, wouldn't you? 
I'll tell you what. Okay, I'm going to use my really noisy dryer here to get some of this foliage to dry. Um, any value questions or color selection questions? I'm really bad. I took that Sterling Edwards workshop for two days and now I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I should change from American Journey to Holbein and what was the other brand he was using a lot of? But he's really good about using a limited palette. Tell us what that. Tell us what that um, online magazine that has Johan in it. Or whatever oh yeah, it artist what? It's, it's called Artist Network. Artist Network. And it's fr it's free. Artist Network. Maybe it's Watercolor Artist Network, but. Uh, if you get the Watercolor Artist Magazine, which I do, just got an issue the other day. Uh, somehow from that magazine, I ended up signing up for the Artist Network online. And gosh, about once a week I get articles. It is Artist Network because sometimes they're pastel, sometimes they're acrylic, and sometimes they're trying to sell you videos and books. But um, a lot of times there's... Um, really great articles that are free. And it says read more and it's all free under the title of different articles. Look at that flying saucer. Now I'll obliterate that with my trunk. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the tree trunk. Uh, one of the best wood colors I think is um, cobalt and burnt sienna. They make a really nice kind of woodish looking gray color. Whoa, is that dark or what? Can't really see it on my view here. Okay. Oh, there you go. Uh, yeah. Now, so anyway, this uh, Johan guy, he had a, um, a free streaming on uh, some of his trade secrets for landscapes. And uh, it was pretty um, informative. You know, the random, the whole random wetness thing is his, his bailiwick. So what I'm doing is using the edge of my brush to do found and uh, lost lines. And just, you know, let the eyeball finish some of these. You don't have to put in every little single branch, just these random broken things in directions like that. Looks like some lights actually shining across the base of these trees where I kind of let it break a little. You see how I left this here? That's a, that's a lost line or lost area, lost. These are more found hard edges. But then I could take the whole thing with water and make them all soft and found edges. I mean, soft and uh, lost edges. Let things, you know, sometimes people think if a hard edge bleeds into another area, oh my gosh, it's horrible. I have to start over. Don't. You know, just let it do its thing. And I mean, to me now it looks like a shadow or some other shade value. Maybe there was a charred area back in there. Just say, that's what I wanted to do. <laughs> that's what I planned. Yeah. yeah. So they don't always have to be connected. All right. I think I do need to make these a little darker up here. Maybe we'll get some branches going down here. I could go all day long with my my little crisscrosses. Okay. Good. Random wetness, lost and found, hard and soft edges along in here. Now I did say this was a Nice sunny day, so I'm gonna put in some pretty dark shadows there. And then to make it connect, I'll put some of those same color up in here. 
maybe the shadows e actually even going into the water. Now, you know, I didn't plan this. I'm just playing. Here's my reflections in the water, kind of. Okay, you see that? Sorry, I probably did all that off camera. You think I'm done? Close. Close. Okay. So the last step basically is what they call the calligraphy. Um, I like to take my brush, split it a little bit, uh, and do little grassy things. You see those? So these are definitely some hard found edges, but I want my focus to be back over here where the river is coming. Whoops. Where the river is coming down. So I'm going to darken that. Maybe put some over here. Um, just a dark field now. This is my focus. And I'm going to darken these trees again a little more. A little more detail over here. Where they're coming, where the river is coming through. Pretty dark along in here. Maybe some little doodads. Maybe there's a fence. And a couple of There's some of my birds. A little dark. Okay, get my dryer again because I want to put a fence thing along in here because it's my focus area. I'm not too worried about the trees fading out, the tree trunks, because that's not really my focus. My focus is where the river comes out from the, the tree grove in the, on the horizon or near the horizon. Wow, this thing dries fast. That's already dry. I don't even need a Santa Ana. Okay, that's so I could uh, put in my um, you guys all think you're on a cruise ship with the way it's a weaving. See, the calligraphy is kind of what makes it in the end, I think. And again, you're not worrying about every detail of the fence. Nope, just making little verticals, horizontals. It's bleeding a little bit because it didn't get totally dry, but that's as dry as I would want to make it. I can also do that. Some of those lost and found connected, disconnected lines along in here for some of the, the brush along the the river. Found, these are found but disconnected with little lost points in between. And it looks a little hard edge, so I'm going to soften it up again. Maybe a little bit over here to ground these guys. Maybe some kind of rocks over here. Okay. I'm okay. sure this problem might be bothering some of you because it wasn't totally connected, but I'll put a little value in there. Okay, questions, comments? Anybody wanna unmute and put me on the spot? 
I was a little bit worried when you when you started and made the center of the image so dark, and and I thought, well, gee, that's kind of far away. Shouldn't that be, you know, with some atmospheric perspective? But now I see what you're what you're doing. You're focusing on that area, and the rest of it is all kind of just just there, right. not really uh, dominating the, the the center there. Mm -hmm. well, technically, I started out with this full sheet of paper. See. Ah, oh, I see. Okay. So my, my focus was originally in the lower right, kind of, which if you follow the rule of thirds, your focus will be in the top left, top right, lower left, or lower right quadrant. So I had started out with this being my, my lower right quadrant. And, I, and you have harder edges, like you said, and you have more contrast between values where your focus is. And so I left the white, the river, the darkest area, the trees there, some of the birds, but I didn't want the tree to get too dark because then it would distract from the, the right. focus in the background. Even though it's in the foreground, you don't want it to be the focus. No, uh -uh. and it doesn't always have to be that way. You can you know, move your focus around even in landscapes. Just because something's further away doesn't mean it can't be the, the focus or the center of interest. I had another one called Summer Day. And um, I'm semi kind of following that. Let's see. Excuse the rustle here. But it um, similar to this one without the tree. Hmm. Yeah. And you see how the sky is very soft, very random. Yeah. They're really dark, hard found edges kind of in the middle. And then everything, the white path leading up to the, to the distant trees. Yeah. Okay. Any other comments, folks? If that's the case, um, I can switch gears here and we'll work strictly on skies and clouds. Any last minute questions about lost and found edges? Okay, you, I expect. What were you going to have us do for our exercise? Exercise. Okay, well, next I'm going to go over the skies briefly and cloud colors. And then we're going to do a few skies together a little before 11. Okay. Okay. So, what time is it now? It's now 10 29. Okay, so I got a good 20 minutes. So, if you have your hand out, or if you've got the one that looks like this, we're gonna do some cloud cloud perspective really quickly, and then I'm gonna do some different skies. But if you'll give me about two minutes and reach and change my water since my lab is ignoring me, my Labrador, he's not gonna get up and go change it for me. I'll be right back. We're poorly trained. Yeah, so two seconds, I'll be right back. I'm gonna get some coffee. Did just about everyone get the um, those handouts I sent to Ralph? I guess raise your hand if you got them. Okay. All right, skies. With my paper towels. Oh, there they are. This would be so much more fun in person, but I guess it is what it is, huh? Okay, so very quickly, I just wanted to show you um, what you can do when you're painting a sky full of clouds, okay? So basically the perspective is 
and I'm sure a lot of you have probably already heard this before, that uh, the higher on your paper, which I mentioned earlier, is going to be your darkest area. And I'm going to wet this. And your clouds are bigger at the top of the paper. And as they get closer to your horizon, they're going to get smaller. So I actually drew cloud shapes. And just to show you that they're bigger at the top of the paper. And as you get closer to the bottom, they're going to get smaller and the sky color usually gets lighter. Normally I would do the random thing for wet, but I just wanted to make sure I didn't cover up my white clouds this time. Here I am with that uh, flat brush again. Okay, how much of this is being on the screen with the vertical? There we go. That okay? Not the big cloud. Yeah. You usually have a dominant cloud when you do a sky. And then they get increasingly smaller and more connected as you get closer to the horizon. The way to soften up a cloud usually, the shadow, even though clouds seem to be these white fluffy things, they do have form and they do have value. So what colors do you make your, your shadows? The most common one I've seen people use is um, violet or mauve. And uh, just a, a, a soft edge here, the bottom shadow, bottom, bottom. And then again, you soften this for a found edge, for a lost edge, I mean. Okay, there are limitless colors you can use for clouds and skies and colors. I did send you some mixes between, um, what was that? Uh, the combinations. Yeah, the illusion and the Payne's gray. And, yeah, uh, that's a really good. That's a really good cloud mix uh, exercise. You take uh, burnt umber, and you take ultramarine blue, and you use more burnt umber, a little ultramarine. Here, three two portions. This one half ultramarine, half umber. This one go in the other direction, two thirds, two thirds um, more blue and less umber. And then the last one is just a touch of umber with uh, more of the ultramarine blue. And you can get some different cloud colors that work really well. The other one is Payne's gray with uh, lizard crimson, or I use neutral tint, either one's fine. And then this one, just the gray rainy clouds with the burnt umber and the Payne's gray. Okay, so that was, I think I included that when I sent things. Yes. So again, here's your, um, here's your sky, there's your horizon. Any questions on that one? Pretty, pretty cut and dry. I think sometimes, even though that tends to be the perspective rule, we're always welcome to break them, right? That's a boring line, isn't it? Let's put a little house there. There's something to break it up, a shed, a silo. We're in Kansas. <laughs> okay. Look at the distance you've created already, the perspective. Okay. Skies. I have 
I'm going to use one eighth sheets. That pretty much fits the bill, right? And we're going to do different skies. I was going to do them horizontal, but now I guess I'm going to do them vertically. Okay. So the first sky I wanted to do was just your basic um, summer sky with uh, blue. And I'm going to do six. I'm going to do six of them really quickly. And then I'm going to ask you to tell me what one or two you want to practice. So first thing I'm going to do is take my dirty blue water. Whoops. Do I get a disc? Do I get docked my pay if every time I bump the camera? You just make it people know. people uh, protesting when they look at the uh, video. <laughs> okay. Uh oh, that's right. Forgot it's a video. Okay. So summer sky, wet into wet. I did the whole sky pretty wet. I'm trying to keep it pretty dark up here, and then I'm just going to gradually. I'm almost crisscrossing it a little bringing that blue. Now I'm going to add some cerulean because it's a little lighter. Steady, back and forth. This is your nice summer sky. The one thing you don't want to do is go back over what you just painted. All right. Once you put a sky in, you really, really need to leave it alone. It's just, uh, it will cause your sky to be streaky and um, all, you'll end up with all these white lines. Okay, summer sky. All right, number one. Plus when you put in a, something on the horizon and your sky's still wet, you get that really nice lost edge for the distant. But look, here was a hard found edge right here that came out uh, really nice too, kind of a combination. Okay, number two, sky is going to be my list here starting to throw things around where's my list okay we're gonna do a summer spring sky now there's a man by the name of randy what did i put his name on your list Ron Ranson, and he does all kinds of skies, but he always starts off with a really, really light raw sienna. He says clouds are not white, white, white. He said they are very, uh, I'm going to turn this sideways so I don't keep bumping the camera. You can still see. Can you still see? Yes. Okay. So he puts down a wash of raw sienna before he even starts his sky. It's very faint. You probably have a little bit of trouble seeing it on my paper, but I'm bringing it all the way down. Do I have the fastest brush in the West? Okay. All right. So I've got this really light, light, light raw sienna wash, and I'm going to dry it just a little. And this time I'm going to use strictly cerulean blue. It's a pretty standard. And I'm going to just negative paint a cloud or two in here. The, water, the paper is still just a touch damp. I 
This is my big cloud. Maybe another little cloud on the side here. And maybe a little darker up here at the zenith again. Not much, but just a little. Okay. And then while it's wet, I'm going to use a little bit of alizarin crimson. I'm mixing these all on the side over here. Alizarin crimson with a touch of neutral tint. This gives it a little gray pinky color. Definitely hard edges, right? So I need to go back and soften them a little. I know I'm kind of rushing this, but I'll show you a final result. It's much better. I know I went off the cloud, so I'm just going to pull that value right off over to into the sky. Okay. So this one is mostly, you can see the raw sienna is still, it just tones down the white a little bit and leaves it a little um, less glaring, especially if you have some whites and some other areas that you want to be your focus. Okay. And then here's my horizon again, under the clouds. And it's a very kind of muted, a muted sky. I didn't make it as dark as my original. Here's the original. Can you see the, uh, the lizard and the neutral tint makes a nice little gray violet. And then uh, just the big puffy clouds and the darker cerulean. Okay, that's a springtime sky. Now we're gonna do a, uh, a winter sky. Frosty, cold, what we want today, right? Okay, guess what the ground is going to be? What color? Raw sienna? Actually, it's going to be snow covered. So I'm only going to leave it white, just white. So what I'm going to mix for a, a winter sky is basically neutral tint and cerulean. Now that's going to make a nice gray. And then when you water it down, it becomes very frosty and cold looking. So I'm just gonna do this on dry paper. I'm not even going to um, wet my paper at all. It's just gonna be across the top. Let's see. Can you see that gray blue? It's just very, very light looking. Maybe a little cloudy. So raw sienna and a little bit of cerulean. <clears throat> Did you say raw sienna or neutral tint? Oh, I'm sorry. I meant cerulean and neutral tint. Thanks for the correction. And the, uh, and then, the neutral tint dilutes it. It do dilutes it, definitely. And I'm using quite a bit of water. Okay. And there's the little um, snow. There's a snow drift down here. And let me dry this sky. Can you see how the sky is just very cold looking? the neutral tint in the cerulean, and it's watered down quite a bit. 
but I just wanted to dry this one area here. Just to put in a little some winter bare trees, lonely on the hillside there, all by their lonesome. This is what my other one looks like. <laughs> you see the cold and the very pale, pale sky. Okay. Okay. Any more questions on those three? Now we're gonna go in for the drama. The drama is going to be the sunset. Now sunsets can be uh, any combinations, uh, blue, red, yellow, um, red, orange, yellow, violet, red, yellow, orange. And you just basically work down from the top and it's like a blended layer on layer. So if I start it, I'm just going to do some random wetness up here. And I'm going to start with a violet sky, I think. The sun sets out in the desert area. Then I'm going to switch to alizarin. blending it together. You see how they're just kind of blending nicely? Put a little bit more in there, make it a little more dramatic. Put in a few little streaks of red as we get further down. Now I'm gonna to switch to cad orange, blend that in. This is pretty much all on dry paper with a, a wet, wet into wet. And then down to the horizon where the sun is actually here. Look at that sun. But we're just gonna see part of it. You can go back in and you can put in streaks while it's wet. To give it that more, the clouds are low. I'll put in some of the red streaks up here. And then, everybody saw that pretty good? Mm -hmm. It's just bands of color, basically, one blending into the next. I could have started with the blue at the top and gone blue, violet, red. Usually stick to three, two or three colors though. The reason I'm drawing this, wow, I'm amazed at how quickly this thing dries. I'm gonna put in our, um, Valley of the Gods, They're different rock formations. You sure have a quiet group, Ralph. Uh, well, most of them are muted because usually they're so talkative. I had to had to shut them up. So <laughs> yeah. I feel like I'm putting them to sleep or something. We can unmute. Well, tell them feel free to unmute even if they want to chat. I like to talk while I'm painting. And here's the. I'll put in some darks in the back here. Okay. Yeah. There's your sunset. Oh, got to do this. Probably a little too wet. Get your cactus in there. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So much fun to play with these skies. And then what do you put on your horizon? You can just play with those all day long. Okay. That is four. What is five? I did the sun. Oh, here's my other sunset one that I will show you. 
Mm. Can you see when you really lighten the horizon with the yellow and even white, it's just uh, really makes your sky pop. Nice contrast. Yeah, just that contrast with that top. The zenith again, the darkest part of your sky, the highest part is going to be your darkest and the lighter as you get to your horizon. Are and of course, vulture, my birds. Are those vultures that are coming in? Those are, those are vultures and uh, just some of the rocks. Okay, so I had my good ones here while I was whipping through the, the, the demo ones. Okay, this one is going to be your storm sky. Question? Question. Yes. Yeah, this, this is Rhonda. Um, the one that you just showed us, mm -hmm. is that the same colors? Because they look a lot, they look more grayer and it actually looks more realistic to me or is it just, it dries that way? Um, it dries, it'll dry. Uh, my, I got a little carried away with my Lucerne Crimson on that one. This okay. one I used uh, CAD Red instead of the Lucerne. So one might be a little more dramatic and the other one maybe a little more realistic plus I use purple see the difference yeah. so again your combinations you. can be anything and everything my favorite artist that I was telling you about uh, Rachel Sloan here's her some of her blended skies can you mm -hmm. see her blue to yellow yeah this one right. Just two colors she blended. Very subtle. And then very subtle. And then this one actually went the other way. The values never really change. Here's the yellow, the alizarin or cad. I'm not sure what she did. And then the bluish violet. And then it's still lightest on the horizon here. So some of her skies are real interesting too. Okay. So I'm gonna do a, um, a cloud one. A rainy, stormy cloud. Those are the fun ones. And this one actually will start out with a, um, it was so nice to get your question, Rhonda. I thought I was in my, my uh, room all by myself, except for Ralph and John. I actually have a studio in the backyard, but I don't get a good connection. It's a little far for me. So I had to move everything into our office. My husband and I are both retired teachers, although he was in the Marines first and then became a teacher. So I'm going to start with the um, the really wet raw sienna sky. Okay, these I can I really have a lot of fun with because they actually become streaked washes because the water will just carry the color in whatever direction you tilt your paper. Now I am painting on a flat board right now. And I'm gonna get a little neutral tint in here to make it a little more gray, especially at the top here. So I'm using neutral tint and gray. It, hi, this is Rhonda again. I don't have neutral tint. Do you have another suggestion? Paint, paint's gray. Do you use okay. paint's gray? Not usually, but I do have it, so. Yeah, I started off with Payne's Gray for years, and then I started watching Keiko Tanabe and the way she whips around with her neutral tint to get all of her shadows and really moody skies. So I have both, but I really like the neutral tint. It's a real more transparent gray, and um, Payne's Gray tends to be more opaque. So, but either one is fine. So on this one then, I'm going to mix, uh, where's my sky? Here it is. I'm gonna mix a little bit of um, neutral tint or Payne's Gray with a Lizard Crimson, just to get a really gray, uh, almost, I don't know what the color would be called, um, reddish gray. You're at reddish gray. Yeah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> and you just kind of let it run together. I'm going to make the clouds a little smaller as I get closer to the horizon. Archie, be quiet. 
That's the dog. Sorry. Not your husband, eh? That was your husband. Oh. <laughs> and I'm going to take a little bit of, because this is actually drying under the lights pretty quick. I'm going to take a little bit of my bottle here and spray it just a touch because I want those to look like this rain's call it coming down like in the desert or something. Where's my brush? And then here's my my ground again, my hills, whatever, under the uh, clouds. I can go in, this is still a little wet right up here, but I could go in with a little darker alizarin. And let that bleed and soften. Didn't um, James McNeil Whistler do a lot of very loose sorts of atmospheric things, uh, nocturnes, didn't he call them nocturnes or something like that? Yes, he did. And I love him and his work. I'm just using this blending brush at Sterling Edwards to control some of the water a little bit. Look a little stormy? Yeah. Okay, the rain coming down. Now here's my other one that I did prior to this one. So you can see a little more muted, but it's still the alizarin and the Payne's gray or neutral tint clouds. Mm -hmm. And you can just look, you just left the, that white area and put it in a fence. Just amazing how it just all of a sudden, it, it all fits. And these are the soft, uh, some hard edges and some soft edges, lost and found edges. Okay. Yeah. What's my time, Ralph? You're uh, right at 11 o'clock. So maybe we should start to practice. Okay. So do you want to do this one, a tornado sky, or do you want to go back and do one of the other ones? I kind of like the storm cloud myself, but, uh, any preferences? Hmm? Which one? I like the storm one. It's sort of different. And trying to get the illusion of rain would be interesting. We haven't had a storm in so long. We're, we, we may not be able to remember what it looks like. Not something we deal with much, but. <laughs> okay. Well, if you have raw, if you have raw sienna and paint gray or raw sienna and neutral tint, that'll work or you can uh, hey, experiment with a little um, I'm thinking maybe you could mix a little el alizarin with uh, some ultramarine or Prussian. Whoa, that would be dramatic. Actually, this is what this is. This is, uh, this is all wet into wet. And then this was the Payne's gray mixed with the um, ultramarine blue. But first I had put in the yellow, you know, the sun and the little bit of the blue sky left before all of these tornado clouds start coming in. And then what makes it look more tornado-y is the way the direction all the grass and the trees grow or are blowing with the orange. Okay, let's do the storm one. So get a eighth sheet of paper and you can do yours horizontal or vertically. I'll choose to do mine vertically. <laughs> that's, that's my only option. And I will draw in pencil wise. Where did I hide my pencil? <coughs> draw your horizon in the middle, right? So here's the bottom of my paper right there. I guess I should show you the bottom. We'll work from there. And we'll just put in kind of a curvy kind of a hill line. I'll do mine really dark so you can kind of see it. All right. 
And I'm not bothering to tape down my sides because I have such small uh, paper. But make a nice puddle of, of raw sienna. Okay, we're going to start with the raw sienna. Let's see. Need more paper towels. Oh, I was going to show you um, Hazel Soames storm clouds before I get started. This is called Learn Watercolor Landscapes Quickly by uh, Hazel Sohn, S-O-A-N. And I marked her page here. Now her storm clouds aren't raining yet, but look at how she left so much white around her desert rocks. And then she brought in some of the violet with the Payne's gray or neutral gray. So I imagine she left the white, put in some soft, you know, blues, like the random, wet this area, and then dropped in some of the mauve and the, and the grays. Isn't that beautiful? She makes it look so dang simple. And then here's some of her color combinations for different skies and clouds how she bleeds them together for soft edges, lost edges. Okay. All right, so mine might be a little dirty, but let's go ahead and wet your whole paper with clean water. And mine is a little dirty, which is probably a good thing so you can see where I'm putting the water. I'm just using my flat and I'm going back and forth and getting that paper wet right up to the top of the paper that you can't see. Pretty wet. Okay, so do you have your raw sienna mixed? I mean your raw sienna puddle. I always put puddles of color on my tray so I can, uh, my palette, so I can get to them quickly little vertical just to make sure it's blending in. So make one puddle of raw sienna and one puddle of um, neutral tint with a lizard crimson or your choice. Okay, I'm going to show you my messy palette here. Here's my raw sienna ready to go. And this is going to be my neutral tint with my alizarin. See how it's kind of a grayish red? I think just for the heck of it, I'm gonna put some ultramarine here. And throw in some alizarin crimson just to get a more purple purple. Okay, so you see my three puddles? Everybody there or watching? Okay, so back to my paper. I'm gonna actually get it wet some more. Now, I'm gonna put a very light, kind of, you know that ugly yellow when you're back east just before the thunderstorm rolls in or the yeah. really bad storms come? Yeah. For those of you that have been back east. Oh yeah. Yeah, I actually grew up in Pennsylvania, Norfolk, uh, Virginia, Pensacola, Florida, um, Rhode Island. My dad was in the Navy. We moved every two to three years. Okay, so you see the bent bands of wet, but still semi-light. Dang. You have to put a warning on this video about hold on to your lunch because the camera <laughs> keeps bouncing. Okay. Oh, that's glory. All right. I'm going to tilt it a little bit this time. I'm going to make a big scoop of my red, my alizarin, any kind of storm shape you want. I'm going to take that other color 
and I'm going to tilt it. You see how it's starting to drop? There it is. Yeah, it's starting to drop a little. You can even help it just a little if you want. If you want some rain dribbling down. Now put in some more dark here. Put in another cloud here. It's closer to the ground. Now I'm not going to go over here because I want this one kind of going that way. I don't want them stacked on top of each other. And I'm just going to hold it and tap it. I'm going to get it a little darker. Just drop in some more and let that trickle on down there. And while it's wet, you can still kind of go in without leaving any wet white spots. Okay, I'm going to tap, tap, tap to get that all the way to the horizon. Okay, does it look like it's raining just for the sun came out? I mean, the sun went away. And then obviously what you can do down below is your choice. Maybe it's an ice pond or an icy river. And you know what? That's such pure um, neutral tint. I'm just going to put a dab in there and shake that around a little. You ever use your finger? No. <laughs> <laughs> Spread that out a little. I'm going to pull it down with my finger a little. All right, storm on a tundra, I guess. Aren't the white areas kind of cool? I love how to leave those white areas. I wish I could see everybody's efforts. I can see Ralph. I'm showing up, yeah. Yeah. How about you, John? Hold yours up. I can see John. Working at it. Oh, very nice, John. Wonderful. You got two big clouds. They look like one's under the other. Maybe put a third one to the right or something. I've got a small, I ran out of paper, but I. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Let your cloud run off to the, run off the edge. Who else can I see here? Oh, Glory, I can see you. Yeah, but I can't see the computer in my drawing board. There's opposite oh, sides of the <laughs> Hold yours up. I haven't done it. Oh, you didn't? Okay. Who's so hard to see that? What Bentley? Oh, nice. Nice, Bentley. Maybe a little darker. You definitely got the rain, though. Okay, Donna. Let's see. This is show and tell time. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wonderful. You're not afraid to get dark. That's great because you know it's going to dry lighter in the end. How about you, Margaret? Uh, no, mine is, I think it was too wet. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's a mess. Oh, that's okay. You just tilt it <laughs> in the direction you, that's great. You know, because if that dries, you can wet it again and yeah. you know, a little less. <laughs> And go over in layers. Dark enough. <laughs> Let me see who else. I'm finally figuring out how to move people. I think Steve's asleep. <laughs> Katie, I see your mosaic floor or background. Cool. I don't even know where I can't even see you. Where are you? <laughs> it's just that you don't see me because I my computer and the phone using it together caught, caused such bad feedback when Ralph and I were setting up. 
Okay. We're just sticking with the picture. Well, Rhonda, nice. Oh, nice. Very I'm cool. I'm using my crappy paper to <laughs> not use my arches, <laughs> but so it's running even more, but. That's all right. It's you crappy. know, the, the streaked washes, I don't it know really... if I sent you the one with the, my streaked wash that actually came out pretty good. Let me see if I have it here. Oh, I tried this too. Yeah. Where? Who's speaking? Rhonda. Rhonda, let me see. This is just, oh, I don't know. Oh, that's nice. You're definitely starting with the dark zenith up there at the top of your paper. This is yeah. one where I didn't really have clouds, but I had uh, just let the water run from the top with a couple of colors. I think I sent you a copy of that. So it's kind of like a, I don't know, warm, cool Aurora Borealis over the some choppy water and cliffs and evergreens. But skies can just be so, you can just use your imagination and, and, and try different color combinations. And uh, here's one I did not send you guys, but it was examples of skies over the ocean. You have your flat horizon with uh, Prussian blue, a little bit of red. Actually, look at that ultramarine cobalt and Prussian. I'm so organized, look at that. Hmm. Here is my sunset one, violet, cat orange, alizarin with violet, a couple sailboats, a couple waves. So these are just little, little minis. This is another, oh, the dog ate it right here. Um, cobalt, wet into wet with uh, ultramarine and neutral tint. Again, another stormy cloud losing, using just the neutral tint, no alizarin. Okay. And then here's a nice uh, neutral tint cobalt, um, what other color? Cerulean clouds and a nice sunny day at the ocean. Beautiful. Okay. And what else did I have to show you? Did you want me to demo anything else? Or did you want to try another sky or? Sure, let's try another one. We got time. Yeah. So who wants what? You want to get wild and try the tornado? Of course. <laughs> Blow us away. Take us to Oz. Okay. Let's go to Oz. Let's go to Oz. Okay. So here's the horizon. Here are the trees. They're blowing in the wind. Here's the barn. Here's the silo. Should I lean the silo? No, we wouldn't see that much. Okay. Have to have some basis. Okay, this will be quick and dirty. And the colors are going to be, we're just going to do it in, in bands of color. Okay, so I'm going to start with a yellow. I have to wipe out my dirty palette here. I'm going to use yellow orange, like cad yellow and cad orange mixed. And that's going to be the first layer. I apologize for my dirty, if the colors come out looking dirty. I didn't change my color again. Okay, I'm going to negative, negative paint. Yes? Um, so I don't know if everybody just dropped off, but my computer just dropped off when you were finishing the sky with your neutral tint and um, Rossi and Oh. What, what did we end up with there? You want to see it? Yeah. Let me find out where I put it here. Oh, just found this sky. This isn't the one, but if you're into pink or blue. Ooh. Did you, we didn't paint the bottom then? We just. This no, out. this was just when I was going to show you different color sunset skies, but it's not the one we did. 
just wanted to show you some other options for colors. Pink, 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 and purple. Okay, where's that rain one we did? Okay, cad yellow. Let's see. Is that the one we just did? The rainy, yeah. stormy sky? No, it had, I think I had more raw sienna. I, I didn't know if you did more after you get, went to the horizon oh. if you, or if you just stopped there. I just stopped there. Oh, okay. All right. And then this was a finished one with just okay. the sky falling down. Yeah. Okay, so their tornado sky. I'm putting in the blue, I mean the yellow, and I want to keep it wet here. But I also want to get in just a little bit of the blue sky that's soon disappearing because it's turning green because the storm's coming. And then I'm just going to get all of this totally wet up here. Okay, this is super wet. So I'm going to take at the very top some neutral tint. That's going to be the really dark part. I'm using a flat. I'm just pulling it down a little bit, curving it, and then my violet. Dang. Kind of in almost like storm fashion, curving, whisk, whisking, whisking a little bit. Normally you wouldn't go quite this fast, but this time is of the essence. And then I'm going to put a little red violet here and bring it down to where it merges with my yellow a little bit. Last color I want to put in is a little bit of orange. Not my best effort here, but hopefully we'll get the mood. The clouds are coming in, especially over there. Okay, does that look ominous? Yeah, here. <laughs> So that was neutral tint at the top, blending, blended that in with a violet and then a little alizarin crimson mixed with the violet and then orange to help kind of blend it all in. And I just kind of kept going with these sweeping motions to make it look cloud-like. I'll use raw sienna for the horizon here a little bit. And I'm going to end up with a lot of found edges because things aren't totally dry. This is my barn, the big red barn. And I'm going to add some yellow to the ultramarine and get these really dark trees in the background are blowing, blowing, blowing. Then the silo will be a little, what color is silos? A little gray, white.
Do silos have roofs that are red? Eh, oh well. <laughs> I don't know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Here's the telephone pole. It's leaning that way. Another telephone pole. <laughs> Look out, here comes the storm. Here's the root cellar. That's where they're all going underground. You like my stories? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I love it. I think I sent yeah. you picture, pictures of all of these so you can, you know, try them at your leisure. And, uh, oh, and here's the birds. They're trying to get out of the way. Here it comes. They're getting a little fuzzy. Okay. Let's see, 1123, so Oh, wow, that's a nice one, Ralph. Yeah, I don't know, but it's I can scary. See it that. scary to me. <laughs> well, we were going in for drama today. Oh, yeah. I showed you the simple little sunny ones. Who else has one to hold up? I know I kind of rushed through that, but uh, I didn't want to cut, cut off. We don't want to think too much about these things. We want to do them. Right. You can see when you get to your foreground, it's just fun to play with whatever colors you might have. Now here's the road going to the farm. Here's the, the lost and found edges again. I tell you, if I can't finish a watercolor in a couple hours, it usually doesn't get done. Folks, I think I'd like to do this kind of thing um, the next time too with Luis. Uh, see if you'll agree to let us paint along for at least, uh, you know, 15 minutes or half hour or so. And um, uh, also you may want to rig up a second device um, to, as I have, to show your artwork. Um, so think about that. It's easy enough to do. Basically, you just connect up to the Zoom link uh, with both devices and then uh, you can rename your device, whatever you want. I called mine the Ralph's Art Cam, so forth. But I, I think that would be, be handy to do. That way you wouldn't have to hold it up. But anyway, whatever you okay. want. There's the tornado sky with the foreground a bit. Yeah, yeah. Looks, looks, looks like uh, uh, Southern uh, Louisiana or something uh, <laughs> these days. Yeah, those poor people. Yeah. I know. Get a... OK, well. If you have any questions, feel free to call me. I'm in the San Diego Watercolor Society directory. Let's see here, John. Hold no, you up. Here's yeah. John with a windmill. <laughs> oh, oh, good idea. Hold, oh, it, up I like little, pop of, hold it up a little higher, John. I couldn't really see all of it. The oh, pop of oh, red. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whoa. I, I'm well, going to I have to you... leave, leave everybody. Hope... Thanks. Okay. Everybody, thank you, Jeremy. Thank you. Well, I hope you have fun with drop dramatic skies now. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We're inspired now. Yeah. Okay, Ralph. Thank you. Sorry about the feedback sound no. with the other computer. Sharon, you have thank a you, comment? Katie. No, I just want to say thank you and I enjoyed the class, although I was popping in and out a lot, but <laughs> okay. I did the same Good to see everyone. Good to see thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Good going, Katie. Thanks, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'll get my iPad. So much fun. Bye, Donna. Thank you all. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Bye. Ray. Okay.
Thanks, so I'll be Ralph. sending out the uh, video or letting you know about the video in a few days. Okay. okay. And thank you, Ralph. Okay. And we don't still forget the warning. Okay. We owe you money, so I'll, I'll pay more money. I, actually, we're, we're doing pretty fine, but uh, if you haven't paid in a while, I'll take some more money. You said $105 we need for Louis. We're pretty close to the, the limit now, so uh, okay. I think I'm waiting for Glory's check. Haven't received oh. that yet, Glory. Okay, cool. Thanks, okay. Bye-bye, okay. folks. Bye-bye. Thank okay, you. Okay, bye-bye.